Alright, welcome back to Pangkaraniwan Developer and in this lesson, we're going to discuss about pointers. Bago na ma-discuss yung pointers, discuss ulit natin yung memory. Yung memory, yan yung part na system natin kung saan natin sinastore yung data natin. And yung data natin, ni-represent natin yan in bits. So yung memory natin, that's essentially a collection of bits. Of course, hindi bits ang gamit natin kasi ilang beses ko na yun pinag-uulit sa mga past few lessons, hindi bits ang ginagalaw natin, but bytes. So, yung collection ng bits dun sa loob ng memory natin, it's much better for us to arrange it. Arrange natin siya into bytes. At para mas mapadali rin yung buhay natin, in addition to arranging it to bytes, pwede natin bigyan siya ng address. Parang start tayo from 0, 1, and so on. 1,000, and so on, lagyan natin ng address yung memory natin. Kaya yung zero address, yun yung first, one, yun yung second, and so on. Okay, so this is the memory. Bigay na tayo ng example ng pointer para makita nyo kung ano ba yung ginagawa ng pointer. Given this memory, meron tayong dalawang data. Yung data na to, nakalagay na dun sa memory natin kung paano natin linalagay yung data na to sa memory that would be in the program structure track. Hindi natin yung discuss ngayon. Later na yung discuss sa program structure track. Pero ngayon, yun lang. Assume nyo na yung data nakalagay na dyan sa memory na yan. So, yung dalawang data natin is yung first, yung dun sa address 1000. Sabi natin it's a short integer. Short integer is essentially an integer na kasha sa isang byte. So, that's 0 to 255 or negative 128 to 127 depending on signed or unsigned siya. Pero dito, it doesn't matter kasi hindi na nagalaw yung signed bit. So, ang value niya is 75. Yung other data natin na nakalagay din sa memory natin is yung short int pointer. Ano ba tong short int pointer na to? Unahin muna natin yung pointer. So, yung pointer are just basically integers. And yung size niya is equivalent dun sa word length natin. So, ang ginagamit natin for the past few lessons rin is 32-bit, kaya 32-bit siya. It's a 32-bit integer. So, yun. Kaya kumain siya na 4 bytes, 32-bit integer siya. Pag hinilera mo yan, tinranslate mo yan into integer, that's 1,000. So, nakuha na yung first part ng pointer. Yung second part ng pointer is yung value niya, it's an integer, so yung value niya, it points to an address. So, address siya. It points to a memory location. So, 1000, it points to yung kaninang short int natin na 75. So, yun yun. It's an integer. Size niya yung word length natin and it points dun sa isang memory address. So, ano yung short int na part na yan? Dun sa short int pointer. Yung short int, yan yung nagdi-define ko ano yung laman. Ano yung type nung laman nung pinapointan natin. Kaya dito, short int pointer siya. Kaya alam niya na kung translate niya yung laman nung location na yun to the actual data, magagawa niya yun. Kasi alam niya kung anong gagawin. So in this case, alam niya na yung value nun is 75. So with pointers, we can indirectly reference data dun sa ating memory. Kaya rito, ginahit natin, short int pointer, nakaturo siya sa 1000. Kaya, using yung pointer natin, meron tayong another way of referencing yung data na 75. What if binago natin, instead na short int ang sabi natin yung pointer natin, ginawa natin car. So, assume niya, yung data na nasa loob sa 1000 is a character data type. And in ASCII, yung 75 is K. So, instead na isipin niya na ang value dun sa loob ng 1,000 is 75, it would assume that the value in 1,000 is K instead of ano. Kasi yun yung sinayin na car. So, maraming problema dito sa usage na to, especially yung sa car pointer. Kahit yung short end pointer, may problem pa rin dyan. Ang pinaka-obvious is we're using 4 bytes to reference a value that's only 1 byte. Parang napaka-inefficient. So, hindi ito yung pinaka-common usage. This is somewhat uncommon usage, but that's for the much later track. 
Ang much more common usage nito is when we're using the pointer to refer to a data that doesn't fit inside a word. Kaya yung mga data natin na mas malaki dun sa 32 bits. At may kita natin na mas efficient siya. So, bigay tayo ng example. This is example na to, we have 6 data. 6 pieces of data. There are actually 7 pero mamaya na natin yan ano, sabihin. Yan, meron tayong limang characters which spells out hello pag hinilera natin siya. Then we have a pointer again to 1000. Kung pointer lang siya, okay, 1000, hindi na alam kung ano yung value ng 1000. Kasi hindi na alam kung anong data type siya. Pointer lang siya, naturo lang siya sa 1000. Kung pinili natin yung pointer natin is a car pointer, well, with that pointer, we could retrieve the value H. But since yung example natin, papakita natin yung data na mas malaki dun sa ating pointer, hindi gagamit natin car pointer. Dito, we're going to use the pointer as a pointer to a text or a string. Next test na hindi discuss ko ano yung concept ng string. Basta yun. So, text, it's more than one character. Diba? Parang kung ano yung pinagsasabi natin, that's text. That's not just a single character but a combination of characters. Here, we're going to follow a similar mechanism to certain programming languages. Gaya ng C. Pag yung pointer natin, sabi natin text siya, it's going to read every possible data na sunod-sunod until makuha niya yung terminator. Yung parang makuha niya yung end ng string. So, sige. Ang nangyari rito, so text pointer siya, ang gagawin ng computer natin, start siya dun sa tinu tinuturo niya na character, then it would proceed to the next, then to the next, then to the next, then to the next. So, nakuha na niya hello. Pag dating dun sa isang certain special character, in C, that's all zeros, yung null terminator natin, alam na niya na tapos na yun. Yun na yung ending ng text. So, with this configuration, itong arrangement ng data natin sa ating memory, we were able to effectively, though not literally, refer to a piece of data na hindi magkakasya dun sa ating word length. Kaya nga dito, nakita natin, it's 5 to 6 bytes. And ang word length natin is just 4 bytes. Kaya yun, ito yung minention natin way before na how we are able to store yung ating data na hindi kakasya dun sa word natin. We aren't able to store it exactly dun sa word na hindi na kinocompress or whatever. Instead, we're using yung address ng ibang location. And we're going to use various mechanisms para ma-retrieve yung data na yun and eventually ma-translate na yung data na yun. So, yun. Yun na yung pointer. It's an integer pointing to an address and we could tell it kung ano yung ina-expect na na data na nasa loob nung address na yun. And we can let the computer translate it. We can tell the computer to translate yung value, retrieve the value para sa atin, and do whatever we want. So for the next lesson, we're going to discuss about arrays, strings, and records. Ito yung mga reference data types natin. And these data types are all based on the concept of a pointer.